it's like pulling teeth <laughs> trying to get anything from this company right now. Starbucks claims to be negotiating in good faith. We're committed to respecting the NLRB process, and we are now and will continue to bargain in good faith. The actuality is that we've only had a couple of bargaining sessions with two or three stores out of the over 230 unionized locations. What we've seen from the Starbucks representatives who have come to the table is indignant rage at the mere suggestion that somebody else would have any say in how even the most minor thing is done at the company. They don't want to hear workers talking about where the cake pops should go, let alone what their 401k should be or what health care benefits should be. And we have to demonstrate to our people they can trust us. And we have to show up. Could you ever see doing that and embracing the union as part of it? No. Our first meeting was January 31st, 2022, seven or so weeks after we won our election. We were very aware that this was a historical moment. Never before had members of Starbucks corporate been forced to sit at a table and essentially negotiate a contract with their hourly workers. We spent a lot of time talking about this list of ground rules or bargaining protocols that the company and Littler wanted us to agree to before they would even proceed with bargaining. That took up multiple bargaining dates. That's really not necessary. We actually did have a chance in that first meeting to go through some of our non-economic proposals. After we went through them, they asked if we had anything that we wanted to add. And I said, yeah, I would like to ask you not to take what's happening in our bargaining meetings and talk about them in your anti-union meetings at other stores across the country. And they took a 10 minute caucus where they went away from us into you know, a breakout room and they came back and they said, well, we're not gonna to agree to that. And within 24 hours, they had taken the five non-economic proposals that we had discussed with them and presented it to stores across the country as the entirety of Elmwood's contract proposal. They said, look, they're not even asking for improved wages. They're not even asking for improved benefits. This is all they're asking for, which was completely untrue. They're playing games to make you feel crazy. It, it's so, it's so bizarre, I don't know. There's a lot of common ground between Starbucks workers across the country in terms of what we'd like to see in a contract or a collective bargaining agreement. They could certainly afford to be paying full health benefits for every one of their employees and not even come close to being in the red. For the most part, every proposal the, the union has made, uh, the company has either said nothing or been radically opposed to those proposals. The only proposals that came from their side were basically what's known as a manager's rights proposal. <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically saying, you know, the needs of the business come first. It was just nothing that we would have ever on our side agreed to any of. So our next meeting, uh, was scheduled for mid-February, I believe. And that meeting was really interesting because they, again, did not want to move away from these ground rules because we had not gotten through all of them in the previous session. And then all of a sudden, in late April, I believe, we were in a session and the Littler Mendelssohn attorney said, we want our next bargaining session to be in person. And we said, whoa, hold on a second. We have agreed upon ground rules that you put forward that said both parties would need to agree to that and we're not agreeing to that. We were able to schedule one more bargaining session on June 1st, and that was the last one. We were planning to move forward with a virtual um, bargaining session, and then less than 24 hours before our bargaining session, all of a sudden I get an email that says, oh yeah, we're meeting in person, by the way. So we were like, no, absolutely not. There's no way that you can come in less than 24 hours in advance to tell us that we have to be there, right? That's, you know, longer times that we need for babysitters or, you know, just allowing more time that's not acceptable. We set a third bargaining session date a little more than, you know, two days in advance. They gave us notice that they were canceling that bargaining session. We've sent demands to bargain for every certified store. It took months for the company to respond to most of those demands to bargain. And when they did finally respond, it was like getting an automated response, but they wouldn't put forward any sort of dates.
A year after a union is recognized as the bargaining representative of workers at a particular workplace, that certification of their representation status can be uh, challenged under the law through the filing of a petition and the union can be decertified as the representative. And there's a very clear strategy on the part of anti-union employers to simply run out the clock for that year and then the union is suddenly vulnerable to being decertified. It's really disappointing seeing them act in this way. However, we're not gonna back down. That's not gonna deter us and we're gonna continue, you know, to be there and be ready. The more organized Starbucks partners there are, the stronger we are. So we keep doing that. But we also need the company to feel this, you know, on their bottom line. We need customers to be willing to stand up and say, we don't like the way you're treating the barista that's been serving me my latte for the last eight years. Our strength is in our voice and our strength is in our collective voice. The company is going to see us using that voice if they don't come to the table.